Jump Town is a PvP event in Star Citizen that as an event is simple to explain and overview but there are many players who maybe wish to get involved in the event in some way and just like the experience to survive or have an impact. The event is often surrounded by misconceptions in the community because there is a small but vocal minority who do not realise or lament that this is a PvP event with a combat focus. At Skunkworks we have a lot of experience with the Jump Town event, ranging from assaulting and defending against random players on the server to full all cause with some of the best players in the game. Jump Town can seem chaotic at first, but there are rules to the game, effective strategies that over time make a situation readable when you are familiar enough with what is happening. What I mean is that with enough experience you can read what an attacker or defender is doing and what the counter to different situations are. This video is aimed at players with either no experience of this event or those who have only ever sought a safe Jump Town. To me, the expectation of safety at Jump Town is misguided, or at the very least, against the spirit of this event. Yes, to play Jump Town in the way it is intended is to accept that you will very likely die many, many times. But it is through this process that you get better at combat and at determining or countering danger before it is too late. Players with little experience have almost no ability to read the situations that commonly unfold during Jump Town. This then often leads to them making easily avoidable mistakes, resulting in their death. And through this, they get frustrated and I think this is a case of expectations not being set before they made their way more than anything else. Jump Town is dangerous by design. It should never be considered safe. Go in with a plan and expect to be attacked. With that in mind, in this video we'll take a look at the different kinds of defense you are likely to encounter at Jump Town and the dangers they pose. And likewise, for those defending Jump Town, these are the kind of measures you will want to put in place. We'll also look at some tips on how to get in if you are a solo player and the best ways to have an impact for both individuals and groups. Jump Town is held at three locations at the time of this video. Jump Town itself on Yela, a moon of Crusader, Paradise Cove on Nyria, a moon of Art Corp, and Raven's Roost on Calliope, a moon of Microtech. None of these locations have quantum markers, so must be manually located when the Jump Town event is not on. And while marked with an icon during a Jump Town event, this marker is not a quantum marker. So, slow flight from the nearest OM is usually the method people choose to approach. The outposts themselves are all identical, a multi-room structure with a single airlock entrance. There are containers surrounding the outpost and on the roof. Inside there are four rooms, the hallway, storage room, back room, and the production room. and inside the production room, you'll find the drug dispenser. This machine will generate packages of the drug maze at regular intervals that can then be sold for a high profit at select stations. Whoever has control of this outpost has the opportunity to make a lot of money, so you should expect groups at Jump Town to defend their position. As I said earlier, but worth repeating, Jump Town should always be assumed to be extremely dangerous. Asking if Jump Town is safe in chat is really not a good idea. Whenever we see this, for example, we will say yes every time. Because to us, this question is just not the attitude to go to Jump Town with. The conga line approach, as it's come to be known, with players patiently queuing to take drugs from the dispenser is fine, I guess, provided you have the defensive force to back it from attack. But this is a PvP event, and if we show up to an undefended Jump Town, we will roll over anybody we find there at the time. So when you decide to approach Jump Town, you should know you are moving into a dangerous situation and should expect to be attacked. With that in mind, how can you improve your chances of survival when approaching Jump Town? Do not approach from the nearest OM. A good org will have at least one scouting ship at the nearest OM to warn of incoming targets. Contact at one two big bar in a, in a Star Runner. That was just one ship, a Mercury Star Runner. When the A2 went down from OM2, it appeared to go down towards the southwest of Jump Town. So keep an eye on the southwest. Coming in this way opens you up to being killed on the way in or on arrival with plenty of warning you are on the way, regardless of what ship you are flying. There are many other methods of getting close to Jump Town. Slow flying manually from another point, it benefits you to approach from a novel direction. You should also consider landing at a distance greater than the signature range of your ship and moving the final few kilometers using a ground vehicle. Ground vehicles are now extremely hard to pick up on radar, making that approach over the last few kilometers much safer. Remember though that your ship can still be detected. 
Choosing ships specifically with lower emissions and turning off shields or weapons can make you even harder to pick up on radar, albeit with risks involved. The Terrapin is a good choice if you plan on moving in by foot, as with shields and weapons turned off, its signature is very low, and it has enough hull HP to give a little more protection than something like a Pisces. If you're bringing vehicles, well, the PTV is the simplest choice, and this can be brought in the back of an Avenger Titan. You don't even need to land to deploy this way, if you set the ship on cruise control, you can just drop it out of the back. For anything bigger, like a Cyclone, the Cutlass Black or the Freelancer Max are good choices. They have a lower signature than something like the Valkyrie, and so again, are less likely to be picked up. The specific dangers of Jumptown can be broken down into four levels. The first falls within the sphere of space of a distance roughly equal to the nearest OM. This is where defending ships will be the biggest threat you face. As we just mentioned, there are ways to improve your survivability while moving through this range. In particular, the path between the nearest OM and the outpost will be the most dangerous, and that your chances of being picked up on radar while further out than your highest signature is much lower. For defenders, this is where you want ships scouting with active ping, keeping them relatively close to the outpost, save for a scout ship at the OM, but moving fast enough to not become targets for railgunners on their way in over the ground. It is a misconception that you won't pick up large ships like an A2 bomber before it is too late. Major threats like A2 bombers can in fact be picked up from a considerable distance. You won't get the targeting pip, no, but you've got to use a bit of deductive reasoning here. When you send out a ping, you will see point clouds indicating where a target will be, all the way up to very long ranges for larger ships. If you are picking up something at 40 kilometers or more out, well it's obviously a big ship, and given this is jump town, an A2 is one of the most likely sources. Having your ships actively pinging and reporting to each other what they are seeing means that both your ear and ground defences should have plenty of warning of incoming threats. Solar well, uh, assets be advised, Rhino actually has seen ping 47 kilometers away from myself in direction Razor Burn. The second level of danger is within about 5 kilometers of Jump Town, and this is where AA, like the Ballista, start to really become threats. It is true that the Ballista can identify and lock onto targets at much greater range, but a good Ballista gunner will wait until a ship is within 5 kilometers to minimize the time pilots can react and evade or countermeasure missiles. When defending this range, you want to position your Ballista at least a kilometre away from Jump Town, and this is purely as insurance against A2 bombs. If they are this far out, then the odds of getting hit are minimal. There is another reason too, and that is that all eyes are on Jump Town. What I mean is that anything near to the outpost itself is much more likely to be spotted. This goes for both ships looking down at the ground, and ground troops like snipers scouting the area for anyone trying to approach. I've arrived at Jump Towns with otherwise very good defences set up, but things like Ballista and Tonks placed right next to Jump Town immediately draw the eye. Ballista can be tracked by their missile fire, so if you are determined with a railgun you can get in there and eliminate, but by placing it away from the outpost you create a situation in which the railgunner has to move, and during movement they themselves are much more likely to be spotted. Ideally, your ballista will be in a perimeter around the outpost, so if you have two as an example, then put them on the opposite sides. The ballista's range is ample to give overlap in cover, don't worry, and in our honest opinion, it really isn't worth using a centurion. They're not very good as general AA, their bubble of protection is too small, and the weapons they field have a very tiny window on target. They work quite well defending a ballista from attack from the air, but committing someone purely to this job is a hard sell in most cases. Ballista do after all run out of ammo quite quickly and will need to be replaced often. I think CLG need to increase the range and projectile speed of these size 4 guns, both for the sake of the Centurion and multi crew ships in general. If you are defending and you have AA set up at the outpost, this is also a good opportunity for your fighters to bring targets back down into the bubble of defense AA provides. If your fighters can draw ships into ballista range, it saves your pilots having to dogfight those targets. If you are coming in solo, I'd recommend aiming to land and leave your ship at around the 5 kilometers range. Plan around this distance for any additional transport needs, but even on foot this is not a great distance to overcome. 
The third level of danger is within a kilometre of Jump Town. Here is where you will find the ground threat beginning. Snipers and railguns specifically. You will almost never see ground troops at Jump Town other than snipers or railgunners because of the A2 bomb threat. There is a 500 meter radius circle around the outpost you just do not want to be in. Mid range gun battles outside of Jump Town. These really just don't happen because of the threat from the air. What you see is a lot of snipers and a lot of railgunners and teams assaulting or defending the airlock and so snipers are perfect to defend the ground while railgunners can eliminate ships loitering in the sky or coming in low to attack. If you are attacking the outpost or trying to get close solo you've got to make use of the weather. It is much harder to spot movement in bad weather but know that if there are snipers out there there is a chance they will spot you. They are going to be about 500 meters out though so if you wanted to go hunting for them that is the distance to go looking. Defenders should definitely respect the 500 meters distance from Jump Town just to avoid becoming a victim to a bomb and should be prepared for long, long periods of nothing happening. Jump Town is still very much mostly an air war with most threats and combat occurring high above in the skies. But you're there as a contingency for when the air defense is eliminated or circumvented. And in those moments, you can really shine. And finally, the fourth level of danger is the interior of the outpost. And in particular, the single airlock granting entry. Assaulting this airlock can really be a coin toss over who is left standing after the fight here. This is still one of the most dangerous aspects of raiding Jump Town. Coming in solo, this will be the most difficult part of your run. If you take the stealthy approach of getting in, this is a point of guaranteed conflict with those that are controlling the outpost. And to be honest, there are weaker points in the chain that you can exploit. Much depends on what your intentions are at the outpost. If you're there just to cause mayhem, then you probably don't even need to go inside. But if you're there to make some money, honestly, your better bet might be avoiding the need to attack this problem altogether and just hijacking the transport ship when the drugs are being loaded onto it. When all eyes are on moving the drugs and on looking out for torpedoes or incoming ramming ships, it can be quite easy to sneak aboard the transport ship. This will depend heavily on the type of ship it is. If it is a Pisces, for example, then forget about it. There's just nowhere to hide inside. And the ship is too weak for you to make a break for it. So in that case, it is better to wait for something else. But if it's a Hercules, while well, you have plenty of space to hide in that thing, just go wait for it to take off again and then kill the pilot. You can then fly off to safety, where you will need to transfer the drugs to a friendly ship in order to sell them. But at least now you have possession of them. And on the subject of getting the drugs off world, I think it should be obvious at this point that your transport ships should not be left on the ground for extended periods. They should be called in when drugs are ready to load. As an example, when maybe 50 packages are ready to go, the ship should be loaded as quickly as possible with the pilots staying in their seat, ready to dust off at any sign of threat approaching. The best defense against the A2 is not having anything within easy reach of the outpost to be blown up or killed. If you stick to this doctrine, then the A2 isn't much of an actual practical threat, more just an exciting spectacle that brings some fireworks to a night of jump town. As with most things Star Citizen, there are some exploitable problems to be aware of. The one with the most impact on this event, arguably, is the ability for players to glitch their way inside the outpost from underneath using certain actions. I'm not going to go into detail on what these actions are in this video, but it is a major problem as it means attackers can sometimes get into the outpost without using the airlock. I do believe that CIG are aware of this problem and if you see this happening, you definitely should report it. I am of the opinion that Jump Town needs more entrances, it needs to be redesigned to have more avenues to get inside, it make things more dynamic and interesting, but this exploit is not the way to go about that. And defenders should be aware that the airlock is not always the only avenue of threat. So hopefully this information will help you have more success in approaching Jump Town if you are solo and give you some ideas on how to effectively attack or defend Jump Town if you are in a group. There is of course no substitution for skill and this should be considered a general outline rather than a set in stone approach. You will always lose sometimes, just as you'll win sometimes. The danger is part of the fun, and I would encourage players that maybe are not very experienced at PvP to give Jump Town a go in its intended flavour a few times, with the expectation that you will die. If you expect that from the get-go and take it as it comes, you might find you get some epic gameplay moments out of it, and over time, build up knowledge, instincts and skill that see you becoming truly proficient. As always, I want to thank all of you for watching and I want to thank all of our amazing patrons who you can see on screen right now. All I can say is thank you guys, it is a huge help and I am very grateful. 
As always, you can find the referral code in the description if you want an extra 5,000 credits when you make an account for Star Citizen. And we'll be back with more from Star Citizen very soon.